Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Waldo and this is my cheap Land Rover project vehicle that I purchased at auction. Now this video was actually supposed to be on fixing the air suspension. However, as you can see, the vehicle is up high. It's actually an off-road height right now and the air suspension is working great. The reason is because I fixed it, I filmed all of it, I had almost the whole video edited. It was gonna be great and unfortunately I lost all of the data. But I will briefly show you what I did to fix it. Now this vehicle is almost roadworthy, and the task for today is to fix the brakes. The brake light is illuminated on the dash in red, the brake pedal itself feels rather spongy, and the brake fluid reservoir is mostly empty. And that means, unless the brake fluid elves came along and removed all the brake fluid, that there's probably a leak somewhere. Now back to the air suspension real quick. The first issue is that the computer wouldn't even try to inflate the air suspension. The vehicle was all the way down, and it was a little bit ridiculous to work on. On the instrument cluster, it said transmission failure, HDC system error, and the traction control light was on. When I scanned the system for codes, there was a code for the brake switch. I ended up tracing the issue to a wire right here in the passenger side door sill. There was a badly corroded junction here that was causing significant voltage drop. This is a wire that sent power to the brake switch and some other related switches as well. After I repaired the joint, soldered it up, put some heat shrink over it, all of those error messages went away and the car rose itself up and the suspension was working just fine. Next, I wanted to see if the air suspension had any leaks. So I raised the vehicle up to off-road height. I pulled fuse number three from the engine compartment fuse box and then I let it sit overnight to see if it drooped down at all. What ended up happening is that the rear suspension stayed exactly where it was, but the front suspension dropped down quite a bit. I ended up replacing the front air shocks and that did help quite a bit. However, it still did drop a little bit. So after that, I went ahead and I pulled the front valve block off, replaced all the O-rings, and now it barely drops at all. After letting it sit for a day, it only dropped by about a 16th of an inch, which is probably normal-ish. And with that, I think the air suspension is fixed. So the brake fluid reservoir is right underneath this cover. Although there's a single brake fluid reservoir for the whole system, it's actually divided into two compartments. The compartment on this side is for the front brakes, and the compartment on this side is for the rear brakes. The reason why they do that is because if a leak develops in one part of the system, the other part will still have some brake fluid so that you can still use your brakes. What we can see from here is that there is still some fluid for the front brakes, although the level is low. For the side where the rear brakes are, there's no fluid at all. It's completely empty. And that tells me that there's a leak somewhere in the rear part of the system. Yeah, so this right here is one of the rear brake lines. And as you can see, it is all corroded. So these need to be replaced. In fact, I'm not even gonna bother adding fluid to try to pinpoint where the leak is because it's kind of a waste of time and a waste of fluid. If these aren't leaking now, they're gonna be leaking eventually probably soon, so I ordered some copper nickel brake lines that I'm going to replace them with, which will never rust, so that's pretty exciting. After I get those installed, then I'll add fluid and uh, see if the brake system is still leaking, and if it is, I can find uh, any other leaks at that point. In order to get to the brake lines that are kind of in there, I have to remove the exhaust from here backwards. It all comes off as one piece. Uh, we got a clamp here and a flange here, and look at how rusty everything is. I have a feeling that there's gonna be some cutting involved here. And take a look at this. The center drive shaft support is totally gone, just like the issue that Christian and Vera had over at LR time. This 12 millimeter socket fits over this bolt, so I guess we'll give it a try before I start cutting. <laughs> yeah, no. I think with a hammer I can probably get this 11 on here. Nope. No, it's just stripping the head here. Yeah, the teeth here are, ooh, that's warm. The teeth here are basically gone. I need a new blade.
Ah, they spot welded this clamp on. That's why I couldn't get it off. All right, I've undone all the exhaust hangers and I have the exhaust supported by a couple jack stands. So now I'm gonna see if I can pull it out. Hopefully I got that bed in the middle there loosened up enough so that it should just pull right off. I managed to get these heat shields off so you can see the brake lines in here pretty well. I think I'm gonna cut the brake lines somewhere in here in the middle so that I have four segments and then I'll pull the segments out one at a time and then I can replace them individually and that way it'll make it easier to not mix these up and send the wrong line to the wrong wheel. Hopefully I don't get too much brake fluid all over the place. So I have here a 25 foot roll of copper nickel brake tubing. And this stuff is great because you can bend it by hand and it'll never rust. I also have another 100 foot roll in case this isn't enough for this vehicle. Now as for actually replacing the brake lines in this vehicle, I think if you were to bring it to the Land Rover dealer, what they actually do is they pull the body off of the frame so that they can access the brake lines that way. Obviously I'm not gonna do that because that is ridiculous. Dealing with the front half of the lines in particular, they sort of snake up and it's really difficult to get to them. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to get these out in one piece. And then as for getting the new brake line in, I think I'm just gonna to have to snake it through. And then luckily, because you can bend it by hand, I can hopefully bend it sort of in place to get it into the right spot and clip it into the original clips. And hopefully everything will work out. I managed to get the front half of the first brake line out in two pieces. I basically stuck a reciprocating saw inside the wheel well and I was able to cut it there and then pull it out from there. This end here, it looks like it uses a bubble flare, which is what I was expecting. All right, so installing the first part of the brake line, uh, I'm gonna leave this little cap on here so that dirt and crap doesn't get inside the brake line. And I'm just gonna sneak it through from the middle here forward. This stuff is pretty nice to work with. And I think from there, I should be able to access it from the wheel well. And then in the wheel well, we get the copper line right here. We just hook it, bring it through. Should be able to just pull it through now. So I have the OTC Master Brake Flaring Toolkit, and I'm gonna go ahead and use this to add a bubble flare to the end of this brake line. So first thing I'm gonna do is slip this nut on here. Don't forget the nut. Use deburr tool to deburr inside of tubing. Let's just flip this upside down here so any crap comes out of it and doesn't stay in the brake lines. A little bit light deburring. Insert tubing through correct size hole and clamping bar until tubing is flush with top of bar. So this is the clamping bar and I think we're gonna use 4.75 millimeter. So we tighten it up. And we tighten until we can't tighten anymore. So basically when this piece comes in contact with this, it should be done. It's pretty easy to do. It doesn't really take a lot of force. All right, that's it. It is contacting it now. So I back this off. Come right out. Looks pretty good to me. It's a really nice bubble flare. And there's a close-up of the flare. It looks pretty good. All right, it is the next day, and I managed to get the front halves of these brake lines installed. I ended up going with an SAE inverted double flare for these, since because this is America, that's the more common flare, and it's easier to find things like unions for these. So we can just thread a union on like this, and then when I make the back halves, I can just screw them into this, tighten them up, and should be good as new. 
So next, we'll replace the back halves of these brake lines. I managed to get the left brake line out the rest of the way, and it just broke right here, so I think that's probably where it was leaking. I think before I install the new line, I'm gonna pre-bend some of it, so definitely I'm gonna pre-bend this part. As for this whole big bend here, I think it might be a little bit tricky to insert it like this, but I might make some small bends where these go. Yeah, so I'm mainly gonna focus on this bend here, and I might as well give my new tube bending tool a try. So I'm basically gonna to try to match this sort of 180 here. I'm not necessarily gonna make it as square as this. Look at that. Wow. Well, that's pretty cool. Obviously not quite 180, but I can probably bend it some more with this. And it's so easy to bend that I can just use my hand here, I think. It's about flush. And then I'll go ahead and throw this bubble flaring adapter on here. And we got a beautiful bubble flare. And of course, I forgot to put the nut on this. <laughs> and there it is, it magically appears. My recommendation will be to follow the instructions, even if you know what you're doing. It'll help you to avoid forgetting things like this. So before I actually go ahead and install that brake line, it, it screws right in here. There's a flexible brake line right here, which connects to a steel line right here, which goes down here to here. And then that connects to Another flexible brake line, which uses a banjo bolt and connects to the brake caliper here. So I'm actually gonna replace all three of those lines. I ordered new flexible lines and got some new copper washers and a new banjo bolt. As for the steel line, I'll just replace that with copper and bend it up to a match. Check this thing out, let's see if it fits. I also replaced the flexible brake lines as well already. Clipped in on the bottom. Well, that is that is just absolutely fantastic. It doesn't rub against the control arm. And the cool thing about this copper brake tubing is that you can you know give it a little bit of a bend by hand here and there just to you know give myself a little extra clearance from from this so that doesn't hit. That is excellent. I'm gonna see if I can grab it from the other side. This is about right.
I was just about to finish up the last side here when I noticed that Rock Auto sent me one of the wrong hoses. On Saturday night, I went onto their website to report the issue, and it's now Monday, and they've already delivered the correct part to me. It's ridiculous how fast that was. If anyone from Rock Auto is watching and you want to sponsor the channel, hit me up on Instagram. <laughs> So it's now time to bleed the brakes. This process gets all the air out of the system and it results in a nice firm pedal feel so that the brakes actually work. So I bought this pressure bleeder for European vehicles for my Volkswagen and as it turns out, it fits the Land Rover as well. So this is gonna make this job really easy and it's only a one person job with this. I'm gonna be using Pentacin.4 low viscosity. Just gonna pour this whole, what is it, a liter? Pour this whole liter in here. And then I do have another one in case I need more, but I think this will probably be enough. And with this thing filled up, I can go ahead and screw this on to the reservoir. Fairly snug. Now I can pump this up to a maximum of 20 PSI. We'll go there, it's a good 17 PSI. And now starting with the rear right, this is the one that's furthest away from the reservoir. I can go ahead and crack open the bleeder screw here. We'll wait till we get some good clean fluid coming out with no bubbles. Definitely a lot of air coming through. I'm starting to get mostly fluid, although it's still dirty. All right, fluid looks pretty clean and I don't see any bubbles coming out, so I can go ahead and close this. And it's as simple as that. I just got to do that three more times and then I'll probably go around again and just check each one one more time just to make sure there's no air in the system. Yeah, so the entire system is bled. There's a little bit of fluid left in here, which I'm going to use to top off the reservoir very carefully. Nice. Looks good. That level is pretty close to the maximum. So the next step is to see how the brake pedal feels. And it is really nice and firm. So now I'm going to step on it quite firmly and hold it for a little bit. If there are any leaks, they'll become apparent and I should be able to check all the joints, see if anything's leaking. Yeah, I'm pressing the brake pedal very firmly. It still feels firm and steady. No obvious leaks. I don't think I've ever had to press a brake pedal that hard in my entire life. Yeah, so I threw some zip ties on these lines to keep them in place so they don't vibrate and rub up against anything. And I also checked the connections and I haven't seen any leaks, so it looks pretty good. So with the brake lines now all set, it's now time to start this thing up and see if the brake light goes away on the instrument cluster. As an added bonus, I have not reinstalled the exhaust yet on this, so we're gonna get to hear what it sounds like without an exhaust. The factory exhaust on this is extremely quiet, so this should be interesting hearing the 4.4 liter V8 roar. All right, let's start it up. <laughs> Listen to that. Oh yeah, it's a suspension fault because I have the uh, fuse removed for that. But the brake light is off. Go ahead and step on the brakes. Feels pretty good. No brake light. Give it a little bit of gas. Let's let it go down to a low idle. There it is. Yeah, it's definitely got that V8 exhaust sound. So with the brakes all fixed, I am close to being able to bring this thing for a road trip. Its first major road trip is going to be driving to a junkyard to pick up a new fender and a new door. As it turns out, this color actually seems kind of rare because I'm having a hard time finding a fender and a door in this color, so I might have to go for a little bit of a drive. Before I do that, however, I need new tires because these ones are terrible, especially one in the back there which has a very large bulge on it and looks like it could blow out at any time. 
I also need to do an engine oil change, and this thing has 131,000 miles on it, and the transmission looks like it has the original oil pan, which has a built-in filter, which tells me that the filter and the oil have never been changed in the transmission, so I need to do that. So keep an eye out for a video on that. I also need to get my Cummins swapped GMC running. My plan is to get that on the road this spring so that I can pick up a donor vehicle to supply a diesel engine for this. I'm still leaning towards going with a Mercedes E320, which has a 3.2 liter straight six diesel engine. Thank you so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.